Hey there teachers and students, my name is Benjamin and I teach teachers the skills they need to pass certification exams. This is my series covering the Texas Math 7-12 through 12 exam for certification in Texas. This video is part 2 of the section covering competency 2, which requires the teacher to understand the complex number system and its structures, operations, algorithms, and representations. Alright, the title of this video is Solutions to Quadratic Equations, and the whole reason that it exists is to give you at least one example of when using the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation, the result is complex roots. Alright, so before you start dealing with complex numbers, and you're trying to solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula, when you get a negative number underneath that square root, underneath the radical, usually you kind of stop there and say that there are no real solutions. But when we start considering the complex number set, then we have to keep going and figure out what the solutions are, what the roots are as complex numbers. So this equation written in orange, 2x squared minus 3x plus 6 equals 0, should help us get what we want. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start solving it using the, uh, the quadratic formula. And for those of you that might need a refresher of what the quadratic formula looks like, I'll write it down for you here in red. It's going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All of that is going to be divided by 2a. And if you're not 100% sure about what a, b, and c stand for, let's go through that really quickly here in green. a is going to be the coefficient of your leading variable term. So 2x squared is my leading variable term here. So 2 is going to be a b is going to be the coefficient of your middle variable term, the variable term that has a power of 1. In this case, it's going to be negative 3. And then c is going to be the constant term that you have left over when you set everything equal to 0. So in this case, it's going to be 6. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in these numbers in for a, b, and c in the quadratic formula. That's going to give me negative b. Um, well, b is negative 3, so negative b is going to be positive 3. 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared, okay, so negative 3 times negative 3, it's going to be positive 9, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 6, all right, and then all of that's going to be divided by 2a, in other words, 2 times 2, so I'm just going to go ahead and write a 4 underneath here. All right, in my next step, I'm going to go ahead and simplify a little bit of a I'm going to simplify a little bit of what's going on underneath the radical. So I'll write 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus, okay, what's going on here? 4 times 2 times 6. So 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 6 is 48. So 9 minus 48. And you can see here, you can already see that this is going to give us a negative number underneath the radical. This is all divided by 4. So in the next step, let's see, we have 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 39 over 4. And at this point, we'd be like, all right, we got a negative, number, a negative number underneath the radical. There are no real solutions. And that's true. There are no real solutions. But we're going to find out what the complex solutions are. So one thing you'll have to recall is the fact that we have defined i in a previous video as the square root of negative 1. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the negative number from underneath the radical um, by writing it as i. Because what we can do is, what we can say is that the square root of negative 1 times the square root of positive 39 is equal to the square root of negative 39. All right. So the way I'm going to go ahead and write the next step is going to be 3 plus or minus i square root 39 all over 4. And for, you know, uh, some teachers, some situations, some exams, that might be exactly the way that the answer is listed. But if you want to go ahead and write that out in the perfect complex number form, a plus bi, we'll go ahead and need to separate that into two fractions to show the real part and to show the ma imaginary part. So what that's going to look like here is 3 fourths plus or minus um, i root 39 over 4. So either this way or this way will be the answer that you're looking for. But either way, there you go. I mean, it's not much different from solving a normal root, except this time we're going to have an i in there. 
That's all for this topic. If you have any questions or need further practice specifically for these type of quadratic equations, don't hesitate to get in touch with me via, via the email address listed below. Also, smash the like button for me if you don't mind. But more importantly, share this resource with other teachers who might need it. I'll see you in the next one.